Hi guys, this is Bilal Khan and you are watching Simplified Coding. In this video, we will finish our login API. So let's see how we can do this thing. So we already have our function login. So again, we will remove this echo statement and we will pass a request parameter in our login function. Now from this request, we will get the email and the password to authenticate the user. So first, we will add the validations in our request that email and password are required. So again, we will write the same thing. So I will copy this thing from here and I will paste it here. And this time email and password are required and password should not be confirmed this time because this time we are doing it for login and we will pass only one password. So we have email and password. And again, we don't need this unique validation because it is for login and not for sign up. So we have email and password and we have the validation. Now, once we have the email and the password in the request, we need to check if a user with specified email and password is available in our database or not. And doing it is very easy in Laravel. So what I will do is I will create a credential and to create a credential, I will use the email and password that are passed in the request. So I have email and password from the request. Now I will check if auth attempt credential. So we call this function attempt from the auth class and it will attempt the login and will return the result whether the login was successful or not. So to this attempt function, we pass email and password that we have in this credentials. So we will pass the credentials. Now if this attempt was not successful. So if the attempt was not successful, we will stop the further execution and we will directly return the response that authentication failed. So here I will write return response and then again I will return a JSON response. So the message is invalid email or password or you can put any message that you want. And this time I will put the status code that is 401 that means unauthorized. So if the login fails, we will directly return the response. Now, if we come after this, if that means the login was successful. So because the login was successful, we will get the user. So we can get the user like this. We will define a variable user and we will get the user from the request. So here we will write request and then user. Now we have the user and for this user, we will create an access token now. So we will create a token. So we have token equals to user and from the user, we will call the function create token to create an access token. And I will name this token as access token. So we have the token here. Now we will get the access token from this token and we will add it to our user. So here we will write user access token equals to token access token like this. And finally, we will return the user and our response. So we will write return response and then json and we will return the user so we have user and user like this and we will also put the status code as 200 and everything else is fine i think we just need to import the things that we used here so we used this auth class here in our login function and that is why we need to import the auth so here we will write use illuminate support facades and auth like this. Oops, it's not user, it's use. 
so we have auth imported and everything else is fine and it should work so let's try calling our login endpoint so open postman and here this time i will call the login endpoint and we need to pass only email and password and make sure you are sending accept application json so let's send the request and if we send the request we will get the response as you can see here so we have the logged in user with the access token that we can use to authenticate the other apis that required authentication for example this api that we created in a previous video so we have one api that is hello world so if we send a get request to our hello world api let's send so we have hello world and if we send the header that is accept application json and if we send like this we are getting unauthenticated but if we send the authorization token with the request so we will send authorization and then bearer and let's copy the token that is generated so i will copy and i will paste it here and if i send the request you can see we are getting the response that is hello world so this api is authenticated with an access token so this is how we maintain authentication in our apis so i hope you found this video helpful and learned something in case you have any confusion or question you can leave your comments below and if you need my source code then you can get it from the link that is also given in the description of this video and if you like this video then please hit on that like button subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends so thanks for watching everyone this is bilal khan now signing off